This video has been made available thanks to 42nd Street Photo. Celebrating over 50 years of service in the photography and video industry, check out their full line of products at 42photo.com. What's up Geeksters? It's me Omar from GeeksterLabs.com. How are you guys doing today? This is a product review from uh, something that was sent to me free for review from 42nd Street Photo. And we have the Canon G16 PowerShot point and shoot camera. Now, this is not the full review of this camera. That review will be coming next after this. But I decided that uh, since there's so many physical features and buttons and such about this camera, I want to do a separate video because I don't want the review to be like 30 minutes long. I just think the review is probably going to be about 10 or so. So I figured I'd splice it up and do the, uh, the tour of the camera itself separately in this video and then I'll do the review after this one so let's get into it guys first off this is a physical tour of the Canon G16 so like I mentioned before this is a point and shoot camera this is what you would call an advanced point and shoot camera um, it's definitely not a DSLR but it does offer some features and, and settings and such that are going to be pretty similar to or it's going to remind those of you that are used to using DSLR cameras it's going to be very familiar for you um, so first off the bat, this camera is very solid. It feels very nice in the hand. It definitely has some weight to it. It's almost a pound. It's about 12.6 ounces. And uh, the material it's made of, it feels like that black or that, that metal, like magnesium style. Uh, it's real sanded down kind of feel. I believe the whole the whole housing is, about, is metal, so, but it feels very solid. It does not feel like a cheap point and shoot at all. So overall, it feels real high quality, real solid. Let's go ahead and get a, and get a, go around the whole camera itself and talk about the different aspects of it. So first off the bat, we have the the uh, the ring right here. If you press this button, you have this release. So there's a ring release here. So you can add like conversion lens. You can actually add like any kind of DSLR lenses to it, but you can do conversion lenses. There's a couple of accessories like ring flashes and things like that. You could snap onto there if you want to, but that's basically the only thing you can do from there. From there, we have the lamp up here in the top. We do have a real. A real image zoom viewfinder so a view not like other point and shoots where it just has the big screen on the back because actually this have a viewfinder on the front right there we'll talk a little about that when we get to the back of it but for now i just want to mention that as you can see here it does offer wi-fi and i did have i do have a separate video featuring and demoing the wi-fi feature of this camera uh in short basically the, the wi-fi allows you to transfer images wirelessly to other devices like smartphones printers computers all those other things uh, so like I said check out my video I'll put in the description below the link to it so if you want to see that how it how you set it up and how you actually uh, a demonstration of how it works it's pretty cool uh, next to that we have the uh, the front dial right here so this allows you to toggle through settings so that's what this little clicking dial and it has a real nice click to it so you can kind of feel it as you go through it so that's basically the front now let's get to the, the bottom right here the bottom we do have the tripod mount we do have the battery and SD card cover so to get to the SD card or the battery, they're both in the same exact spot right there. Pop that out, so there's the battery right there. And then the SD card is right next to that. So you do have to get pop that open. If you want to take the SD card, you have to get to, to that through the uh, battery compartment on the bottom. Oh, also, if you do want to get some uh, continuous power, see a little spot right there? You can actually add a um, like a DC coupler cable port right here so you can replace the battery pack with like a little a little kit that you can buy and that's what this little sl slides up here so basically it replaces the battery you plug it into there the cable sticks out from here and you plug it into the wall and you'll have continuous power if you want to use this for I don't know, recording a video or something like that and having continuous power so it doesn't drain the, an actual battery you can you can purchase a kit for that okay uh, let's do look at the left side of here so left side we have the, the strap for the camera the camera strap we do have a speaker right there on that side flip over to the other side we have the other part where you do the camera strap right there on the side and then we have this little compartment that shows us the the, the uh, remote terminal right there. We have an AV out, so it's audio and video output, uh, or the digital terminal, so you can use your USB cable to take the videos off of there, and our HDMI right there. So that is all that comes over there. So let's check out the top of the thing of the, the, the camera itself. So here we have the Wi-Fi area. It actually says it right there. So this is where the Wi-Fi antenna is on this side of the camera. We have the uh, the manual flash switch right there. So you pop that out. Let me show you facing forward. Pink. This pops right out like that, and it snaps back in. So that's how you can manually do that. Pop that out right there. Next to that, we have the hot shoe right here, of course, which you can use with flash and other accessories as well. Uh, next to that, I'm not sure if it's easy to see, but you have a, a spot right here and a spot right here, and those are for the left and right stereo microphone. And I'll tell you what, guys, um, I do have a video demonstrating some camera footage, video footage, and audio samples of this camera. This this microphone is actually pretty nice. It's I mean they're really small. It's nowhere near high quality. I'm just saying I was very surprised for a point and shoot camera. The uh, the microphone built into it did a really good job. 
So just a, a side note there. Next we have our mode dial right here. We're going to dive into that at the very end of the whole video, but that's that's the mode dial right there. It should be very similar to something you might see on a DSLR. Then of course we have our exposure compensation dial right here. So it lets us easily dial into adjusting the light just right to get it that really quickly accessible to adjust the brightness of our, our pictures. Next to that we have the shutter button. That's what every camera <laughs> comes built in with. We do have the uh, the zoom lever, and this also when during playback, this lets you magnify and, or, or go to index, as you can see right there, those little blue icons right there. So when you are when you do uh, when you go in playback and you're looking at some of your images, you can actually zoom into the images. And then we have the on and off button right there. That's pretty much that. Let's get to the back now. On the back, you can see we do have a monstrous three inch. LCD screen and this is 922,000 pixels. This is not a touch screen uh, However, it's sad to say but uh, it's very sharp. It looks very nice and actually I can turn it on for you guys So I can show you a quick demo of what it looks like See if we can get to a nicer picture. Well, that's pretty bright So that's kind of a, but it is it is very sharp. It looks very nice easy to see all the different like I mentioned before too You can you can zoom in you can go to index that type of thing. So the uh, the LCD display itself is very nice, very sharp. It's, it's huge. But like like you can see right here, you do have the the addition of having that viewfinder with the diopter adjustment dial. So right there, if you do to need to adjust that well, to make sure the viewing is sharp enough for you, you can actually adjust it right there. And I will uh, let you guys know that with you, when you're using the viewfinder, if you have the zoom completely extended out, you can actually see the lens in the viewfinder, which I think is kind of odd. I'm not sure why it's like that, but it is. You can see like a slight hump. Of over the, the top curve of the, of the lens whenever it is completely zoomed out or zoomed in all the way so just something to me, keep in mind we have two uh, LED lights right here indicator lights we have our playback button where I just pushed earlier to show you so you can view all your images that you've already taken we have our movie record button right here which is what you would use whenever you do switch into movie mode on the dial right here or even when you're taking regular pictures you can automatically press it and it'll start recording just like that instantly Next to that, we have our shortcut button right here. So that's a programmable button you can you can assign to whatever you want to make that right there. Have our ISO speed button. And this also doubles as the image erase whenever you're in playback mode. Next to that, we have our AEFE lock auto exposure and, a fil and it also does the filtering image display. So whenever you're in playback mode, get to the bottom down here. We have the uh, the the auto focus frame selector button right here, and this also doubles as the Wi-Fi button. So when you're in playback mode, you can press that. And that lets you get into the Wi-Fi settings on there. And then we have our menu button, which is pretty self-explanatory. So we do have a turning dial right here, and it does rotate. It completely rotates, but it also clicks on these, these three areas. So you can navigate through the menu system using that. You can either rotate or there's sometimes whenever you do whenever you're dialing on different options and such, you can actually click do the clicks. So when you press up, that's the display button right there. So that goes into manual focus or, or, or the up button. Then we have our, uh, our display button down here, so it changes the things that you see on the screen. It's also the down. We have our macro button, so you turn the macro on and off, the setting. And our flash button right here, and it also does the right. So top, up, down, left, right is different options, plus it features these things. So when you're in the menu system, like I said, you'll, you'll use the D, as a D-pad, and then when you're using the, the camera itself, you can adjust these different things via these quick keys right here. So let's check out the mode dial on top right here. So like I said, this is probably something you've similar. If you've used a DSLR before, this will look real familiar. So I just want to go through all these different settings because some of them are actually not quite what you would see on a DSLR. So the first one we have here is auto, and we have hybrid auto. So obviously auto is going to take care of all the different options. You can switch to auto, start taking pictures, and uh, they'll be pretty good. But of course, me, I prefer to go into manual to tweak, have some control over that. But if you need to take some quick pictures, auto is good. The next one we have is auto hybrid. And so this is interesting. This auto hybrid, it's, and not only does it take pictures automatically or sets the camera automatically, it actually makes a short movie of the, of, of the day just by shooting stills. So basically you switch to this mode. Every time you take a picture, the camera records two to four seconds clips of the scenes before your each shot. So it's taking video clips. And then, uh, and, and these are all combined in a, like a big digest movie at the very end. And it's almost like a behind the scenes video of your shoot. So like you're shooting a kid's birthday party or whatever. Every time you take a picture, this is gonna record two to four seconds right before that picture. And so it's gonna combine into one big little movie one big movie at the very end, and then you can export it, and you can see the movie. So it'll have like a bunch of four-second clips of your day. Uh, I've never actually used it myself. I, I the the scenario that that I tested this camera or the the way I use a camera is, isn't really like that. But if you use it for events or like a wedding or birthday party or something like that, I could see how that would be kind of interesting. But uh, I'm not sure what uh, brought them on to try and put that option in there. But that is something that it does. So that's what that that option is for right there. So the next one we have on top here is SCN, which stands for the Special Scene Mode. 
and this is a uh, basically when you switch it to there it allows you to pick between like portrait night scene there's even a snow and underwater uh, option so there's just another automatic option for you right there next one we have is creative filters as well so this adds a variety of different effects to the images when you're shooting they're just built-in filters that are built into the camera and of course we have video movie mode so you can also shoot movie just by pressing that record button i showed you earlier so even when like right in the middle of shooting uh, any kind of pictures if you just press that it'll start recording you don't have to actually have it in movie mode and one other thing to know about the movie mode is that it does shoot 1080 hd video in, at 60 frames per second and it even can shoot super slow-mo i believe it's at 240 frames and then at uh, 120 frames per second of course those are those won't be in hd but the the, the there's an option that's available to you so let's go over here to a P. So when you get to P mode, that's basically the program auto exposure mode. You can customize many function settings to like to suit your to, your preferred shoot, your preferred shooting style. Uh, when you go to TV, TV stands for shutter speed mode, and this uh, camera automatically adjusts the aperture value to suit uh, your shutter speed. So whatever you want to set the shutter speed to, you can do that right there. We have AV is our aperture uh, mode, so the camera automatically adjusts the shutter speed and allows you to control the aperture value. And we, when we get into M, it's basically like manual. It lets you shoot or lets you adjust the shutter speed and the aperture, and also adjust the, the flash output as well that the flash puts out there. So that's kind of interesting. I've never seen that on a point and shoot camera before. And then C1 and C2 are basically little cut, custom settings. You can set those to wherever you want them to be. So that is the actual camera itself, guys. Uh, if there's any other questions you have, if any other buttons or the options that I went over, go ahead and post those below. I have to say that overall, this camera has been very impressive, um, especially for shooting video. The, uh, the image stabilization is really good. It's really sharp. The 1080, 1080 60 frames per second looks really good. Um, I wouldn't say that, I mean, I think if you're used to using a DSLR camera, that there are going to be some options or some things that you're not able to adjust as easily as you would on a DSLR or have that, that some of the flexibility that a DSLR does offer you. But um, if you are just looking for something that's a little bit smaller, that's better quality than your smartphone, better quality than an average point shoot, but you don't want to take your DSLR out with you, this would be a really good option for that. It does retail for about 450 bucks, I believe. Uh, 40 Second Street Photo offers this for 450 currently at the timing of this of this review right now. The price may be different if you're watching this video like a year from now or something. But currently, it's 450 bucks, so it's not a cheap camera, not a cheap not a cheap point and shoot at all. But uh, I think for the features that it packs and and the, the it's just the, so easy to use. I don't know. It's hard to pass up, especially like I said, if you don't want to have to be keeping keep bringing your DSLR with you when you go on your little family vacation or your little trips. You want something a little bit smaller, a little slimmer, easier to pack in your purse, in your bag, in your backpack, whatever it is. This is the camera for you. It's going to offer you a lot of flexibility and some really good quality images. And like I said, I do have a, a sample, a video, some sample footage, video samples and picture samples and even audio samples of, you know, during the video. So you can see what kind of quality of images it's able to take. It's pretty surprising. Anyway, anyways, guys, I'm going to be having my full review of this next and I should be doing that in a day or two. So if you guys have any questions so far of what I've talked about, go ahead and post those below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, show some love to that like button down below and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoy this content. And uh, as always, make sure you stop by geeksterlabs.com for the latest in tech news and video reviews. And I will see you guys in the next video review.